dear brothers and sisters in Shalatara, pray that you are well wherever you are in the world. And today we're going to continue. It's a, it's a it's a bit of a theme at the moment, which is connecting uh, heart C um, to to football. And uh, it's interesting how. Um, this is gaining a lot of uh, interest now uh, throughout the world. If we just look at football, you know, it's, um, it's a global sport and we hear many people from all walks of life saying it's a beautiful game. So why is it beautiful? Because when you study um, subjects, uh, as a polymath, and we were talking about that a few weeks ago, there's an urgent need for the Ulma to become polymaths. Not everybody can become polymaths. But as we move further into this dark digitic system of false illuminating lights, which is controlling how we see and think, we need to, to fight against it to be able to to see things uh, in a wider understanding through a Quranic lens, which is, is how a polymath would see. And how many of our great ulama uh, used to see as well. They were not just uh, Islamic scholars of Islamic sciences, but of many other subjects which were covered. <clears throat> and when you look at you know, shall we say, uh, the natural world and the uh, Al-Quran Daqwini, how does that relate to football? So initially you think, where is the connection? And this is how a polymath would approach a number of subjects. You think of them unrelated, but as you start to study them, you see that they are connected. And we also see in the world around us that everything is connected. And I've seen some beautiful connections because yes, football is a beautiful game, but when you start to, to penetrate and see the relationships and you start to see the patterns and contexts, subhanAllah, how it connects to everything that heart see is involved in, how it connects to the study of the Quran, how it connects to the study of the Al Quran Taqwini uh, through the, um, the ecological uh, mindset. So we become uh, ecologically literate, subhanAllah. It opens so many doors. And next week, we're going to go a little bit further. We're going to look at the amazing connections between football and permaculture. So we are exploring permaculture. We are currently looking at social permaculture, culture, or we will be doing soon, inshallah, and then looking at the land-based permaculture. But then, because we're in this theme of football, then is there a connection? 100% there is a connection. And because football is a global sport, and, you know, there are Muslims throughout the world that watch football, play football, coaches like myself, it's not going to go away. The only concern is, is if football takes us away from the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to, you know, some people may look at football as an, in a negative way. So if you approach it in a negative way, how do we make it in, make, how do we make it positive? How can it benefit us? So if our youth are going to be involved in football, we need to, to open the door so they can see the connections. Yes, football, carry on. But are you aware of the connection between football and the Quran, football in the natural world, football and the ayats, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that will open their mindset as, as well, which we need to do as we move forward in these times of great fitna and oppression and injustice. So today, how does football have a relationship with the principles of nature? So let's explore, inshallah. Bismillah. Next slide. 
So rewiring and the reconnecting with nature. So this is what the focus of heart C. So we've, we understand that heart C is a movement and the first uh, focus is to rewire. Uh, the second is to reconnect with the natural world and then is to rewild uh, and then which is to redesign and then to reestablish. The first two R's, the two principles is to rewire and reconnect. And this definitely uh, brings football and the natural world uh, together. And as I keep saying, there's three uh, areas I really need to, to make sure that you really do focus on, which is the relationship, the term relationship, patterns, and context. Whether we're studying the Quran, we're studying football, or we're studying the Arabul and Taqwi. Look at those three areas. Rewiring at the moment and reconnecting with nature. And as we explore football, we will see how everything actually connects in amazing ways. But you've got to be able to see it through the Quranic lens. That's important. Next slide. The focus on the, on the three areas, as I said to you, so patterns, relationships, and contexts. And if we study uh, football coaching, and this is what connects us in a way to this um, world that we are living in now, where we've been programmed and conditioned to think and see in a particular way, which affects us as individuals, it affects our, our education, it affects our, our workplace. Um, and so it even if has affected how uh, coaches coach football, that they will set uh, particular uh, tasks, and challenges, but using a reductionist, using a linear sort of uh, process in their sort of uh, sessions when they teach football. So it's affected all areas of society, including the football coaches. And it's a, a, a number and it's growing, uh, but it's about changing, it's about making that change. And as the last Sopano Talala says in the Quran in the translation, it will not change the condition of people or nation till they change that, it's within themselves. So this is a gradual change that, that uh, particularly with scientists who are moving into sports science are now gaining the lessons from you know, uh, the natural world, connecting to how you study ecology. And actually, yeah, so this is how nature operates in the same way. How can we see how nature operates and can we take lessons from nature and implement that in how we train uh, you know, players on the, on the uh, football pitch? And so there are many coaches now that are focusing on patterns, relationships, and in what context. And like I said to you last week is that you know, we have been programmed, even if we're not playing football, just if you watch football, any football match on YouTube or the television, that we're watching it through, you know, the, 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 the premier sort of channels, is that uh, we are focused on the ball. Wherever the ball is going, that's what we are focused on. That's a linear uh, way of seeing things. We are conditioned to, to zoom in. It's not until after the match that you sit down with a football analyst and suddenly it's like, wow, you know, they've opened up the whole game because they've basically showed you things that was happening that you didn't even see. Uh, that was going on in that corner, that was going on. And that goal happened because of A, B, C, and D, this network, this connection of, of patterns and relationships and in context, what happened. And, and you didn't even see that but because they have been trained to sit back and, and to zoom out. And so this is why this is an exciting time for football coaches, in particular, you know, those Muslims that want to become football coaches, okay? Because it also helps them to become polymaths through uh, teaching uh, football. Next slide. So let's look at nature's key principles, how the natural world operates. Remember, everything, of course, is controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does nature operate? Because it's been working uh, in a sustainable way since 
plan began. Since the last Subhan Tala established life on earth. And this is why we need to understand it and we'll learn more next week when we look at how do we survive in the end of times. We need to be able to sustain ourselves and sustain our families and make and establish sustainable communities. So, so scientists are looking to the natural world. So how does nature do it? So that's what we're going to look at now. And then look at the patterns, look at the relationships and context and how that connects to football. Next slide. So the first principle is patterns. Remember those three terms, patterns, relationships, and context. So the natural world works on a number of patterns. In fact, the, there's many patterns. And this is the first aspect of rewiring because so many people that I can take out into the natural world to a forest just have no idea when you're trying to say them, well, can, can you see that pattern? Can you see this? Can you see that? They have no understanding. It takes a long time for them to, ah, yes, now that's becoming clear. One reason is because they're just disconnected from the natural world. They're disconnected from the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's been done deliberately by none less than Iblis, the Billah. And so we need to uh, try and, and understand and to be able to see these signs. Once you've seen patterns, and the patterns are everywhere, they're, with, they're within us, they're, 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 they're everywhere. Once you see patterns, believe me, your journey, uh, particularly of Islamic contemplation, moving through towards inshallah ta'ala ihsan, which is the ultimate level, uh, will just transform your whole life. Every time you go into the park, every time you go into the forest, you just begin to see patterns. And suddenly these are doors, gateways, which will then lead you to this wonderful journey, uh, which is towards the last subhanahu ta'ala, and then the study behind the ayat, behind the signs, which are signposts, to then explore the wonderful names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا قَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَلِئِنْسَا إِلَا لِيَأْبُدُوا That I have not created jinn mankind except to worship me. And so we need to be able to see and study uh, patterns, examples, spirals, okay? We need to be able to see branching. Uh, just two examples here. So, you know, where are they? And particularly when we focus on off-grid living and we want to explore uh, food forests and we want to explore permaculture, we need to be able to work with patterns. And so one of the key things is when you begin to study nature, is I say to you, you need to be able to, to see what's in front of you. And this is why, as I keep saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran is commanding mankind to look, to look, to look, and different terms for looking and seeing. And once you start to study in Arabic, Quranic Arabic, what, what this means, you know, why, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Basara here, Ra'a here, Nasara here, in what context? suddenly you're, you're, you, you are beginning to, to, to go through that transition of seeing through the Quranic lens and to transform, just like how the Prophet وسلم, did in the cave of Hira before the first ayat was revealed, which was Iqra, because he was contemplating about the signs of creation. Likewise, football coaches are now coaching youngsters how to see patterns to work in in a, a way that as they move forward in uh, uh, up and down the pitch and within the team is to work according to different patterns subhanallah next slide the world and us are surrounded by patterns as i've said in nature it is connected to energy flow Okay, so when we look at permaculture, as we will do next week, or any aspect of nature, this is where there's two forces that come together, and it creates these, these patterns. So nature has sustained itself because it will uh, use and it will sort of uh, uh, do it, it, its work 
with as little energy as possible. It needs to save energy, okay, uh, and preserve its 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 structure. So when you start to study ecosystems, so this is how nature uh, operates. And likewise, if we want to become a, per a permaculturist, we need to observe patterns as well. Right? It's about saving saving uh, time. It's about saving energy. That's what we need to do. And so we work. Uh, with nature and likewise when you're teaching football okay we need to think cleverly we need to think so how does nature work what patterns does nature work in uh, what patterns does nature use what 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 patterns do insects uh, use okay so uh, and then use those patterns and adapt them to how then to play on the field okay so that's so now we begin to see those wonderful uh, connections. Again, if you're playing a game of sixty minutes, you you need to uh, preserve your 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 energy, okay? And it's about preserving your energy and working together in harmony to basically keep possession of the ball as long as possible, with the intention of scoring and also winning. Next slide. So patterns used in football, and we, we highlighted this last week. And so just here, and this is, um, if I said to you next time you, you watch a, a football match on, on television, there are very few people that would actually see this, but this is what the football analysts are seeing. It's very clear to them. And they're seeing it because they've studied patterns as part of their, of their job. And so I said to you, the majority of people that even I take out into the natural world to go through that nature connectedness, to go through nature mindfulness on this remarkable journey of rewiring and reconnecting, um, I'm trying to point out patterns to them and they're just not seeing it. But once you see the pattern, you can never forget and, and, and that transition, that transformation will, will then begin. And so you know, for example, let's look at the honeybee. Look how the honeybee uses the hexagon. It doesn't use triangle. It doesn't use a circle. It doesn't use a square. It doesn't use a rectangle. Why does the, the honeybee use a hexagon to, to, to make its its hive? Okay. Uh, and, and, and so if we look at Islamic geometry, okay, the world owes the Islamic world so much because, you know, in our expertise in Islamic geometrical patterns, our mosques, all of the key tourist sites in the Muslim world, where even non-Muslims flock to, they go in there because of the majestic, the beautiful design of architecture, which is all connected to Islamic geometrical patterns. And that's the geometrical patterns that you will see throughout the entire world, Subhanna. And so some of the key patterns we will also see on the, on the football pitch, as you can see here. And as the natural world, every hour, every second works in patterns, likewise, the football coach and the modern football coach is now teaching football players how to work as a team in using patterns, just like here. And so if we look at key teams, for example, uh, Barcelona, and if you go back to your, Johan Cruyff when he was alive, when he set up the academy in Barcelona, this is where it really came. It was a point in time where the Spanish clubs in Spain, they were winning the, the European Cup and the World Cup. And every time the English clubs were competing against particularly Barcelona and Real Madrid, they just couldn't get hold of the ball because the Spanish players or the Spanish teams were, were working according to these patterns. Close proximity and just sort of one touch pass or two touch pass, but using these patterns and going across the pitch like this. And so the opposition had no chance of getting the ball back because they were imit they, 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 they were uh, uh, imitating uh, how the natural world works. Subhanallah. 
Next slide. Patterns used again here in football. So we've highlighted here, you can see how the players are uh, using patterns. And the first thing that they're doing is they're looking. Okay. And that's the first R, oh, isn't it? The first principle of heart C. It's about uh, re it's about rewiring, it's about re we see in the world through the Quranic lens, okay? And so for us to be able to see patterns, we've got to connect with the natural world and, and, and we've got to do this continually, just like we have to connect with the Quran all the time. We have to connect with Al-Quran Taqwini all the time. As a football player, you need to be able to do in this all the time as well. So you start to see these patterns. But it, it begins with by looking. You can see how that connects. I don't want to give too much away, but how that connects to the first principle of permaculture, which is to look and observe and interact exactly what's happening here with the Barcelona players. Next slide. Patterns again used in football. So now you can see how both of these teams are using these patterns. If you start to as soon as you look at this, sometimes it looks very complicated, but it's not until you zoom out. So here it's the left brain hemisphere and the right brain hemisphere working together as they should do, but it's the right brain hemisphere being able to zoom out and to connect the dots and to see what's happening here. You can see so many different patterns. You can see a triangle, a hexagon, and it goes on and on and on. And this is how the modern football coach just like a modern polymath is teaching players now to, 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 to work uh, as, uh, within a team, uh, maybe between, say, three of you, but use patterns, okay? And so this is just like how a ecosystem would work. And likewise, the coach is trying to create his, his team to operate just like a ecosystem. So as the players are in possession of the ball, okay, is they are, without thinking, uh, they are operating through different pattern, okay? Close proximity, you can see here, close proximity, all right? Which is very important. But for the general sort of public, they wouldn't see patterns. If this was now a TV screen, the majority of people would be looking at this through the linear uh, 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 sort of path and just observing the ball, okay? But it's now to use the right brain hemisphere and to look back and see, ah, yes, patterns used in football. Likewise, how does nature work? How does nature sustain itself? It's through patterns. Likewise now, you can see how we have to learn about patterns when we study permaculture or food forests, etc. So you begin to see links, patterns, relationships, contexts. Next slide. Second principle is diversity. The natural world survives, subhanallah, through a principle of diversity. Okay, and likewise, next slide. In football, okay, and this is now accelerating, okay, we can see the diversity uh, across across the world. How many, for example, Premier League uh, teams now have players from all corners of the world? Of every colour, every nation, okay, uh, and so this is this is uh, positive uh, for football, and likewise for the natural world diversity is also uh, uh, important. It's absolutely vital. And again, as we will see next week, it's even, it's even more vital for us I mean, when we think about off-grid living for permaculture and food forests. So again, we see those wonderful uh, connections. Next slide. The second principle is, again, again, we're just covering here on the importance of diversity. And the third principle is health. But again, we see in the natural world, it is, it's healthy. It's not like in the human world. So many 
diseases, so many viruses now. Uh, and, and because of, 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 of our, our weaknesses, our, our, our sins, uh, and you can only understand this when, if you penetrate the Quran. But we see that the natural world works in perfect order, works in harmony. Uh, it, it, it's, it's full of beauty and it, it, it's, it's pure. It's pure. It's not dirty. Uh, it, it, it does away. It eliminates everything. It eliminates waste. But look at our towns, look at our cities. It's full of waste. It's full of filth. And we've lost this connection with this natural fitler that deep down, we as humans, if we really look inside us and introspect, we don't like to be in the company of, of dirt, of filth. But, and, and, and sadly, for the majority of our time, we are surrounded by it. And it's not just through rubbish, but it's through foul language. It's about how we see things. And this is why Taskir Nafs is very important as, as well. Next slide. Again, how football academies can support athletes in mental health, okay? And so there's, there's tremendous science that has been, uh, which is, is coming on board now uh, to, to support, you know, particularly uh, the professional, but also the amateur uh, football athletes in, in, in helping them to deal with mental health um, uh, issues. Uh, uh, but again, nature is our teacher as, as well. Likewise, when we study the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kunum remain in the company, benefit to learn. Likewise, we need to be in the company of the ulama that understand the Al-Quran Taqwini. And likewise, we also need to be in the company of the biological leaders as well. How does the natural world maintain its health? How does it maintain its balance? Okay. And this is why we need to study ecological eco-literacy. Okay. And, and inshallah ta'ala, uh, this is very, very important, vital uh, for us to, to, get, to go through the rewiring, the reconnecting, the rewilding, the redesigning, inshallah ta'ala, the re-establishment as well. Next slide. Again, here, yeah, health, very important. Next slide. Again, ecosystem services. Now, we see that scientists are beginning to open their eyes now that we have, you know, whether you call it climate change and that could be debated. There is, there's definitely issues then. Uh, uh, and, um, and there's definitely global uh, issues, but you can see how man in, uh, in San has become so selfish that he's just, he's living in with this consumerist mindset, this linear uh, uh, mindset of just like, I just need to uh, take and take and take and take. And modern man feels that the way to success is, that is, is just to take and grow and grow and grow and grow. And it's all about wealth uh, and gaining capital. Uh, but we are slowly beginning to realize that no, it's the natural world where we need to preserve because we depend on the natural world through ecosystem services, through the supporting, through the provision, through the regulating, through our culture. Next slide. Principles of interdependence, okay? Again, if brothers and sisters join me on my nature courses, once we've learned to see patterns, and as we start to think like an ecosystem, we will start to penetrate in an ecosystem, for example, into um, an, a forest ecosystem. We begin to see the patterns, I'll point out pat the, the natural patterns. And then we start to study that ecosystem. And then we start to see how everything is connected. You begin by opening and developing your uh, 
natural senses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. And again, this transforms how you see the world. Likewise, principles of interdependence on the football pitch. You have your players where you're playing uh, under sevens, under nines, under tens, five aside, 11 aside. Again, it's about the players working together, working in harmony, knowing as you're in a match, okay, where are you in your position? Okay, am I a defender? Am I midfield? Am I attacker? Know your position, but not just to know your position, but then the coach will, will then train you through the senses of, of looking, in interacting. And the first principle of permaculture is who's on your left, who's on your right, who's behind you, okay, within your team, knowing the skills and the mindset of the players around you. Where is the space available? And then looking ahead and take all that on board to look at your opposition. And that's how you start to move into the understanding more about patterns. Next slide. And the principle of adaption. So again, we need to be able to adapt ourselves on the football pitch. The game can change. We can be in possession, we can be out of possession and through transition. That's, that's football. In possession, out of possession, transition. In possession, out of possession, transition. So if we are in either one of those three, then how do we adapt? Okay, if we're, if we're in possession and then out of position, how do we adapt? How are we going to work as a team? How are we going to operate to get the ball back? We're 2-0 we're down. How are we going to adapt? How are we going to restructure through a different pattern on the pitch to, to make sure we get an early goal? And likewise, the natural world survives because it works on this principle of adaption, Sapana. But remember, this is all being controlled by Allah, Sapana, Watala. And once we start to observe and to study food forests, then we will really understand more about the ecological aspect of adaption. Next slide. And the principle of cycle. Okay. Again, you'll start. Once you start to embed yourself in the natural world through the different um, uh, processes, at the different levels of nature connectedness through the Islamic uh, uh, contemplation, through the tafakul, this journey towards the last subhanahu and you begin to open up your, your senses, you begin to see patterns, you begin to see, uh, you begin to see and to think like ecosystems, uh, then it begins to change. And one of the first things that you begin to see, particularly you know, within a pattern, uh, is is the cycle, is that cyclical. Every this this uh, the uh, cycle, like a spiral. Okay, and whether it's the the water cycle, night and day. Okay, the growth, the growth of a plant and the decay. The baby grows of a human, goes into youth, adult, and then old age, and then death. So everything in the natural world, macro, micro, is going through the principle of cycle. Likewise, so how does that connect to football? It's not where you're going up all the time. You have players are going through cycles of good Performance, not so good performance. We might be in the league, we might be high one year, down the next year. We might win the cup this year, we might not win the cup that year. We might lose one match and then win another match. So it's about learning cycles, what went right, what went wrong. But to know that if we go up at some stage, we're going to go down. If we're down, the only way is to go up. Next slide. And again, we just see this in this wonderful um, example here. Next slide. 
So in football, we win, we lose, we win titles, we lose titles. Again, this is connected to cycles. Okay. Next slide. Oh, again, in football, we, we, we sign players, we lose players, we have new coaches, and we lose coaches. This is just just to sort of expand out more about understanding um, about uh, cycles. So, for example, we just take for example in the Premier League in the UK. The Premier League is controlled at the moment by two clubs, Manchester City and Liverpool. But next season, it could completely change. Only a few years ago, you had Leicester City, which was which is a very small club, and they won the the uh, Premier League, which astounded the whole world. So, only a last superantella. Next slide. Again, the beautiful game. And it is a beautiful game. So when we go out into the natural world, when we make this connection with nature, when we go through this journey like we're doing a heart sea of, of rewiring, reconnecting, we begin to see the signs that I had in a completely different way because we begin to think like an ecosystem through patterns, through the interdependence, through diversity, through the oneness, through beauty. And you can't but just be in awe of a last supama with other signs. Everything in perfect order, everything in perfect harmony. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa says, study, reflect, look at my signs. Do you see beauty? 100%. But these are the signposts, Aya. Behind the tree, behind the bird, behind the mountain is even more beautiful. It's the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa And that's as far as we can go on this planet in our earthly life. Imagine in Jannah being in front of the creator of the creation. So when we think of football, when we start to, as a coach, coach football according to how nature works, then of course it becomes a beautiful game, a global game. Next slide. I think we'll come to the end. Oh no, alhamdulillah. The kalima shahada. Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadun abdu rasulu. And yet yeah, that's, it, it, it sums it up because once you start to make these connections and this is the journey of a Muslim that how can we say ashadu la ilaha illallah that I witness I bear witness. How can we bear witness is that you've seen. How can we say I have witnessed, I, I have witnessed if we have not seen? It is only through the witnessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation by becoming ecologically uh, literate, by becoming a modern polymath, by tuning into the right brain hemisphere that we can attack the digelic system and see the world through the Quranic lens. And yes, the whole point is as we see football as a global sport increasing and many Muslims now embracing football, then so how can we make sure that as they're playing football, as they're watching football, as they're becoming football coaches, that they still maintain this connection with the Quran. They still maintain this connection with the Hadith, with the Sunnah, with Al, with Al Islam. That they see not just beauty in the natural world, but they see beauty uh, in football as well. And so I urge you all, if you're thinking about doing summer camps, and taking 
uh, or going on family outings, okay, take your Quran, plan, plan a weekend or a, a summer camp where you're engaging with the natural world, but you're also implementing uh, football as well and making the relationships, making the patterns and connecting to the context. I think that was the last slide. Alhamdulillah. So that was just, a, a again, a taster. Uh, there's so much that we can go into. But it was just a taster for you just to just to see all, all, all of this. And we end with Tawheed. That by uh, connecting with the natural world, connecting with the signs, we have to declare that there is a creator behind the creation. And that is the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that has to then come from my lips, Sashadu Allah ilaha illallah. And the teacher for us is none other than Muhammad. Muhammad and Abduhu Rasul. And likewise, when we look at football, we see again how whether we've looked at diversity, interdependence, beauty, uh, everything, and all these principles that how harmony, how everything is connected. Coaching, facilities, the admin, competition, fans, okay? And so what we really need to do is what we are seeing in the world, dear brothers and sisters, we are seeing uh, Muslim countries now who are becoming owners and injecting lots of money, which unfortunately is haram money, is riba, would be love. But to help us on this journey, and we can't, we can't shell football. It, it's it, it's there, so we need to use it in a positive manner. How can we bring Muslims on board who can become administrators? who can take charge of competitions, who are future football coaches, who become uh, there to become, to develop uh, Muslim, national, local, regional uh, teams. But to see our, our fans also, that they are also connected in the same way through what we've been teaching uh, today. That would really transform, you know, imagine going to, a club like Liverpool, Barcelona, and, and, and seeing that, that this whole football community is based on Al-Islam. Not just the players, but from the board to the fan base, to the food, to the admin, everything is based on Al-Islam and which connects to the principles of nature. What a fantastic dawah opportunity I think that is the last slide. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.